Hey folks, I hope all is well with everyone today. So today we are going to be learning about key groups. That's right. I'm going to show you three ways to create key groups. So it's going to be very quick because it's not, um, they're not hard to make. You can get very advanced things with key groups, but today I'm just going to show you three simple ways to make them. And if you hang around to the end, I'll show you some little more advanced uh, things that you could do with key groups and some various settings. So um, the plan is I will show you quickly the three ways that you can create a key group and then after that I'll take you into the settings and stuff because when you make a key group depending on what you're making you uh, may have to change some settings it's very easy um, so that's the plan so let's just jump right in all right um, I want to preface this first by saying um, first off let's define what what is a key group for those that don't know a key group is an NPC program that allows you to take uh, in its simplest form a single sample like let's say a bass note and turn it into a, a playable instrument by spreading it across your keyboard it's called key tracking okay you can get way more advanced than that. You could stack samples and layer samples and um, really get some advanced uh, techniques and sound design techniques from key groups. Okay, so that, that's what a key group is. Okay, and then one more thing before we get in to, I want to preface this again by saying now before we had key groups, um, because key groups are a relatively newer thing to NPCs, to, to the modern ones. They didn't have them on the, um, the legacy ones. Um, so, but we did back then, before there was key groups, um, my friend had a 2000 XL on about 2003, but without giving you my life story, what I'm getting at is we had 16 levels. We didn't, we didn't have key groups. And so I wanna show you that first, just in case you're not, just in case you don't know what that is and how you can use it. So, like I said, what a key group does, it allows you to take a, a single sound like that and then once you make it, spreads it across your keys as a playable key group. Also on your pads and you get pad performance, okay? So, say you have a, you know, loaded up kit. A lot of them come with these single sounds like this, right? Well, what are you gonna do with that? That's how you say, what are you gonna do? Well, this is how we used to do, and you still can. You hit 16 level, you choose the sound you want. Okay, hit 16 level, and you make sure in the menu that it's on tune, okay, like that. And what that does is it spreads that single note out across 16 pads. Just like that. It can be very helpful um, if, like, per se, you just wanted to do a couple pitch, you know, if that was an 808 or something, or just. Like that, you know, you could just do that real quick. Now it's very limited. It's it's similar to a key group in that it spreads it out across your pads. It will not work on the keyboard. Um, and you get 16 notes. There's not a lot of editing available to do. You can change your scales. You see here, you get a bunch of scales, which is helpful, but that's 16 levels. That's what we had. Before they gave us key groups okay and that's still helpful that's why I decided to um, include that just in case someone hadn't heard of it or are aware that um, you had that uh, within 16 levels matter of fact while I'm there I want to show not to get off the subject but if you track if you sorry tap 16 levels um, and you look and see how much you can do with 16 levels. I know this ain't about 16 levels, but velocity, tune, filter, layer, these new articulations are wild. And it's just, just what it is. It gives you 16 levels of uh, of whatever it is. 16 levels of filter, of layering, of slicing, of velocity. Um, so yeah, that's that. So moving along, coming out of 16 levels, I'm gonna show now three ways to create a key group. 
So jumping right in, since we have this right here, and this is how I this is how I initially learned about key groups. Again, you get these sounds here like this, right? So the first way is you select a sound that you want, okay? And then what you'll do is I'm looking for my pen here. Sorry. Oh, anyway, um, you select the sound that you want. You either go into program edit or double tap right there. And you see the little keyboard symbol right there? You hit that and right there. And as you can see, you know, you can't see the whole keyboard, but it. See, it key tracks it across. You know, you know what I mean? So, and then if you come in the pad perform, okay. And you can, here's one thing too, quickly. Uh, if you load up a key group, you can't hear anything, come into your pad perform and make sure and see, because that might mean that it's on a lower octave, okay? Okay. All right. So that is way number one. Okay. Way number two. What you want to do is, if you don't have one, create an empty drum track. Okay. Then you want to come into browse. All right. And let's see here. Uh, let's look for. It don't really matter. I like keys. What you got to do is load it to the pool okay come over here to your sample assign and you're gonna uh, click and drag this over onto a pad okay there now what we're gonna do is come back out to our main and we're gonna do like we did the first time and obviously make sure you select that pad come into your program edit and tap that right there okay and So um, <clears throat> that's way number two. Okay, so let's see. Way number three is just by simply creating a key group track, okay? Like that. Now, and then same thing. You're gonna go into Browse. Come out of Sample Assign. What if we just do keys? Let's look for a bass sound. Same thing, gonna load the pool. Okay. Sample assign. Now this way, if you notice already, the pads look different. When you do it this way, by creating a key group track from fresh, okay, you have to I'm gonna do it like we did the other one, but it has to go on this first pad. So whether you tap the pad here or on here, make sure that first pad is selected green, and then instead of clicking and dragging over, yeah, we are going to double tap. As soon as you hear that boom, that means it's loaded. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, is that, see, if it's so low, you can actually see, because of the key range that's set, that's at, this is at negative two octave, octave negative two, so that's, if you can't hear it, come and see your path perform, and then, So that's the third way. Now that I've showed you the three ways, um, I'm going to show you um, some settings, okay? Because you are going to, depending on the t type of sample, uh, 
that you're using or the key group that you're making, you're going to have to adjust some of the some of the uh, the settings. Again, it's very easy. You come back into here. Our favorite friend here is our program edit, either by your button or just double tap here. Okay, and the first thing I want is I want to address this. Okay, there are two modes of key groups. Okay, <clears throat> first one, you'll notice it right here, it's legacy. Okay, um, I think some people, I've seen videos, I think some people get confused. They think that this is non legacy mode, or they think that this is legacy mode. But anyway, when it's highlighted white like that, you're in legacy mode. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of the differences between legacy and non-legacy mode. And first, it's called Dave Legacy, and the other one is either non-legacy or Key Group XL. Okay. Now, the two main differences that I've noticed is first and foremost, when you're in legacy, take a, note, take a notice down here. You see you have your you know six different sections of settings. Okay. When you come out of legacy... And come into key group XL or non legacy, you immediately see this arrow here. You still get all the same settings, but now you get utilities. Okay, you get oh, key group stacking is amazing. You, you can take multiple key groups and stack them either on top of each other or you can spread them out across the keys. For instance, if I had a base, I could well, I could do this with key ranges, not just this, but you know, you could have your base layered at the bottom half and your keys laid at the top half and then with this you can add unison or har harmonizer effect so you know then you get a mod matrix um, for macros and all kinds of stuff a randomizer so um, that's the major difference I see one of the major differences between legacy mode and um, non legacy mode uh, the, the other one I notice that when you're in legacy mode you don't get pitch band okay come out of it and okay so those are the those are the two things that I've noticed so me per personally and you do how you like I like to come out of legacy mode you get a you get the pitch band and then you get all these extra um, settings okay um, and if again I don't know all the ins and outs I just showed you the what the what the differences that I've noticed between non-legacy or key group XL and legacy mode if anybody watching knows any of the you know major differences between the two um, besides the added effects um, feel free to comment and let me know um, so so that's you have legacy and non-legacy so right now I'm not in legacy mode and as you can see okay I can get a pitch bend now for some reason you prefer legacy mode and you want a pitch bend um, I can show you a way um, just hang around a few more minutes because I need to explain some things okay now depending on what you're playing right like let's see what do we got here we have a your notice that you cannot play okay a chord right and also in pad perform if you go to chords listen to your notes see it and there's a reason why and these are one of the settings so no matter how you make your key group you're gonna have to maybe adjust some of these settings depending on what it is you know what kind of sound it is okay so like for this these are keys and we want to be able to have chords and progressions and all that. And we also want to be able to simply just play. See, it's not not letting us play. And all we do, again, come into our program edit. And um, what you got to do is come to your global here. And first on your global, you want to make sure that, which is poly, that it's not on mono. That it's either on poly or... It has a dubber. The those numbers will tell you like how many notes can be played, how many voices can be played simultaneously. Sixteen is plenty. Over here, this is for the key group itself. You want to make sure, like for this, that you take it out of mono and either put it in poly or I generally just give it like six or eight. The number is like how many notes you can play. I'm fine with six, you know. So no. Okay, and not only that, 
but now you have the see and also with progressions as well So again, you know, if you're in mono, see, you're only going to get single notes, so make sure you put that in, or you could just put in poly, but I prefer, and you do whatever you want, six or eight notes. Right? right. The other thing too, let's come out of here, go to our bass. Okay? Might want to put if it's an 808, especially that carries out. If making 808s, change the poly to mono. See, that's not necessarily an 808, but what I'm saying is if it carries out a lot, if it's got a lot of a lot of decay and sustain, you want to make sure you change poly to mono. Again, play around with the settings, you know, until you get what what you need. You know, it's not um, you're not going to hurt anything by you know messing with some settings you're not at all that's what the undo button is for you know and uh, set yourself up a thing just for key groups and, and mess around with it and see what you can. okay folks sorry for the switch up here but there's one last thing that i wanted to add i should have said it earlier on because it's kind of important okay i would do this ahead of time before you make your key group start making your key groups I would come in and go ahead and make yourself a key group folder first and foremost, okay? And then when you're done making your key group, you know, of course you can save that project, but you know, you may spend a lot of time making a key group and a lot of times, because I know this from experience, I've accidentally come across some really awesome key groups like that I've made, you know, some, some, some cool settings. and. Couldn't really recall how I did it, but did it, and then wanted to save it. So it's very important to save. It's just like anything else. When you're done here, you come into your menu, and you choose save right there. And then right there, just like anything else, a drum prog or anything, a program or anything, you got the key group. And then you can hit key group. And then again, make sure I would personally create a key group folder all right folks that is it that is three ways to create a uh, key groups and then to save it so that's it i hope you folks uh enjoy video and uh everyone have a, a great day